is Wednesday, uh, March 27th, and we are in room 1060, and it is about 10 after 2. And I am Chairperson Perry. I will be joined in just a minute by Mr. Rosendahl. And let's see, why don't we, let's see, we have Mr. CLA, did you want to start with two, or how did you, how would you like to proceed? I would suggest starting with item two. All right, great. We will start with item two, and Mr. Wickham, that is the uh, Chief Legislative Analyst to present the verbal report relative to the status of the new hall and event center implementation agreement and the ownership status of AEG. So, Mr. Wickham, if you will. John Wickham with the Office of the Chief Legislative Analyst, and, and maybe if uh, Philip Hill with the Convention Center could join us as well, ah, great. or Tom Thank Fields, you. who could provide some additional information. Thanks. Um, as you know, September 28th, I believe it was in 2012, the City Council approved a series of um, actions related to the New Hall and Event Center project mm -hmm. that included all of the entitlement and planning and um, environmental approvals required on the regulatory side of this, um, the City's obligations and, and role, as well as a series of um, draft um, co contracts and agreements on the proprietary side, such as a ground lease, the Gilbert Lindsay Plaza mm -hmm. agreement, et cetera, et cetera. Out of all of those contracts and, and et cetera, that set of documents, the only document that actually um, was executed was the implementation agreement. Mm -hmm. That was the first step that laid out how this would, uh, how this whole project would unfold. And one of the key elements in that implementation agreement was a requirement that um, AEG acquire an NFL team mm -hmm. before we move forward on any of the other elements of the project, which will include a construction of the new hall, the bonds, the new, the Gilbert Lindsay Plaza agreement, the signage agreement, the ground lease, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, the city's actions to date have been have related only and solely to that implementation agreement, which included moving forward with elements of the design for the new hall, and um, basically that's it. Okay. Well, I, uh, before we go on, Mr. Hill, I just wanted to say, uh, Mr. Rosendahl will be here in a minute. I'm glad we're looking at new ways to modernize our convention center. Um, you know, and I'm hopeful that we'll continue our work. Uh, with AEG to secure a football team and to use that potential transaction to leverage uh, funds to modernize the convention center. But I think it's also important to look at other ways to achieve this goal. Now, the West Hall, obviously, we all know is very outdated, and the convention center does need that contiguous space to be much more effective and more competitive. And I think the other bigger issue is that we need more hotel rooms uh, immediately adjacent to the convention center in order to attract bigger conventions. Now, I'm very interested in exploring the sale of the West Hall and leveraging those funds to modernize the convention center. And uh, I, I know we're going to talk about this in a bit, but I also think the potential for bringing in the uh, Urban Land Institute uh, to evaluate the West Hall site and to help us consider the city's options is a great idea, as well as uh, including a needs assessment of the convention center. So tell me, uh, Mr. Wickham, I, I think you're the right person to ask. Or Why don't we let Mr. Hill t speak next, and then we'll go back to the questions. Good afternoon. Philip Hill, Interim General Manager, Los Angeles Convention Center. It's good to be here today. Um, we are working definitely very closely with the CLA and the CEO as far as the options for the future. But I think as we look forward and we look to what's really important, what we're here for is citywide conventions, and what we're here is to be able to greatly enhance the number of citywides in collaboration with LA Tourism. So no matter how we, we look at this, the focus I'm sure will be in the right mix of how much of exhibit space that we do end up with, how much is contiguous, and how many medium rooms especially we need to attract in today's environment so that we are successful in being able to capture primarily the East Coast large associations like the medical associations, which are very valuable for Los Angeles and economic development and job creation. So that's where, in a, at, at a 10,000 kind of foot point of view, where I believe we'll be going as a team, but we'll be studying this more in detail in the future. So a couple of questions. Maybe you both can take a, take a look at these questions and uh, give me an answer. Uh, one, can we work on a parallel track 
with AEG and work on a modernization strategy uh, absent a football team? Um, it, the, as you know, the, the implementation agreement has a life through October 18th, 2014. And 2014, and so we are moving as if everything is going to be operational in that tr in that time frame. They will get an NFL team, but we can also do work in the in, on a secondary path, as you've noted, mm -hmm. of determining what do we do on um, starting October 19th, 2014. I agree 100 percent. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let, 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 what other models uh, do have other cities used that you know of, at least at this point? Um, to modernize their convention centers that we could consider? Uh, we're actually um, looking for some outside consultant help in identifying what those models might be. There is a significant issue of, of how you, you would fund it in the project we have in front of us. Uh, the net new revenues resulting from the development of the um, the event center help with the funding for that. So there there are other things that we need to look at in order to find the, the answers to that question. And then uh, let also talk about when Mr. Uh, Mr. Miller's at the table, uh, if you could, this concept of the possibility of selling the West Hall to leverage those funds to modernize the convention center. Uh, uh, certainly, but, um, um, and Mr. Wickham's doing, Steve for the record. Uh, Jerry Miller, the CLA. Um, John's doing a terrific job. You're now getting into uh, item number one, so that's why Miguel and I came up. Because you know, <coughs> well, if, if it's there, if there's no reason Absolutely. why we can't consider both of them at the same time. Sure. So just for the record, so we're clear, we're considering items one and two together then. Okay. Okay, so let's just <laughs> flow right into that. <laughs> Okay, and, and, and again, we released a, a report on the 26th, and, and uh, uh, as you said, Madam Chair, I want to stress that this in, in no way signals uh, backing up on, on the commitment to work with AEG for the NFL team. Uh, we think it's a terrific deal for the city, and we hope that it happens. Um, but as Mr. Wickham was, was saying in terms of time frame, um, uh, we do need to look at alternatives if that doesn't come to pass. Mm -hmm. And when you start looking at the timeline, um, in October 2014, um, if we need to move in a different direction, we would probably have to put out, we would have to decide what we want and what's in the city's best interest. We would have to put out a request for proposals to bring somebody in, uh, you know, to fulfill the new requirements. So we're probably talking about not having anything ready to start construction until the end of 2015 or early 2016. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is, is the primary reason why we need to start looking now at what the options might be so that if it doesn't work, uh, then we are ready to go. So the concept would be really, um, and it's, 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 it was a stressed initially, we stress again in the report, um, the, the, uh, achieving an NFL franchise here was not the end in and of itself. It was the means to an end of refurbishing our convention centers so that it were competitive for uh, nationally and really worldwide for, for conventions. That work still needs to be done. So there are potentially other alternatives on the West Hall site. Mm -hmm. um, the hall itself is, as Mr. Hill can attest to, um, uh, it does need significant upgrades, but there are also design issues with the center, the lack of uh, continuity with the, with the mm -hmm. halls and others mm -hmm. um, that we may be able to address in another fashion by either ground leasing or selling the West Hall site mm -hmm. for, for a hotel mm -hmm. or retail um, and using those funds to help redesign and rebuild the convention center as it's con contemplated um, with the NFL deal. There's a, several <laughs> other options um, uh, that have been listed in the report. If you could just talk a bit about those the lease, potential city lease revenue bonds uh, using the Mellow Roos, um, uh, the TOT uh, within the special taxing district and a voluntary annual assessment on uh, hotels which might benefit from a better convention center? Um, well, I think I'll let Miguel address those. Oh, okay. um, but again, they, they were meant as examples, not necessarily the, uh, yeah. uh, you know, all of the... The all and all. And, yeah. and there is no suggestion that we uh, levy another tax. These are not recommendations. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the council, in deciding how it wishes to proceed in the event the NFL doesn't happen, does need to see what all of the various options are. Okay. If I could add, Madam Chair... Um, the, Just say you, your name for the record. Uh, Miguel Santana, CAO. It's important to point out that 
you know, much as a result of the conversation with AAG, there's been this uh, renewed interest in the convention center, and this is the configuration of the convention center is one of several pieces of a larger strategy. Uh, much to your leadership and the leadership of the mayor, we now have hopefully a new authority that's going to provide oversight over the convention center and, and tourism throughout the city. Uh, it's so that it mirrors what the most successful convention centers around the country are, including Chicago, San Francisco, and others. And part of that in includes, if you look at Chicago as an example, the a hotel is actually part of the convention center itself. Mm -hmm. It's uh, And in fact, they just launched, announced that they're going to build a second hotel um, that's actually tied to the convention center mm -hmm. and that's overseen by this authority. So as Mr. Miller indicated, there um, you know, there's, there is an excitement about utilizing this asset to bring more tourists to Los Angeles and more visitors, and that um, this is an appropriate time as we're concurrently uh, working with AEG to hopefully secure uh, a, a football team and a stadium under the, the original proposal, which is uh, a unique and, and strong proposal for the city, uh, still have an opportunity to explore a plan B should that not occur. Uh, Mr. Rosendahl, did you? And we're, we're being joined by Mr. Labanche, a third member of the committee, so let the record reflect that. Uh, Mr. Rosendahl? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for your leadership and work over the last few years on this. As you know, I'm very disappointed to hear that AEG is playing some games with us, and so I, I need to get some more clarity if I can. AEG, are they saying to us they're going to let us know by October 18th something? No, the um, fourteen. The implementation agreement, our our contract with AEG in developing this project has a lifespan on it of two years from when it was executed. It was ex it was executed on October eighteenth of twenty twelve, yeah. and so they have two years, uh, according to our agreement with them, to find a team and to bring a team to Los Angeles, two and two years, and then that will ensure that, you know, if they can do that, then we, we, we insisted on having a deadline in there. Yeah, is Ann Schultz thinking about that or not? Oh, absolutely. I think some what of the... What are you thinking about? Uh, that I can't tell you. I just know from the press um, reports that this is at the top of his mind. It was in all of the reports that, that appeared on the subject matter, and it was a priority for the, for the company. So do they buy into what I've been saying uh, for a couple of years? Two fresh new teams. Don't steal a team from another city where they're enjoying themselves. We're a big megalopolis. We can create two fresh new teams, and we could have a wonderful opportunity downtown. And what Anschels has to realize is the pie will get bigger uh, when we bring in two new teams, not less. He's wrong. But my big question right now is, does he eat that $45 bucks that, you know, we made it very clear, no taxpayers' money at all? until this process is clear. Who's going to eat that $45 million and do we have a chance of getting two fresh new teams, or is that all over with? So uh, the city is not in the hook on this deal until we issue the bonds, and that occurs only after a team has been secured. Uh -huh. So uh, the agreement was established that way, so the ball's in their court to identify a team and to inform the city of it before we actually issue any bonds, which is the vehicle in which we actually uh, are on the hook for, for this particular deal. Uh, the, the agreement contemplates two teams, doesn't require two teams, but it certainly does uh, uh, consider the fact that two teams would make it uh, a viable option. I think the EIR also permits for that. Yeah. And, and so, I would only add that... Um, yeah, please, Jerry. <clears throat> they're operating the major projects trust fund agreement, so they're, the, the fees... They're paying fees associated with the plan check and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, so you know, the forty-five million dollars is is the amount purport, reportedly spent um, by by AEG on this. On all that and, documentation and, and paperwork and, 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 and design, all that et cetera, et cetera. The city is not spending the money to do that. I will also say that at the end of the day, whether it's two new teams, whether it's a relocated franchise. Uh, that's really entirely out of our control. It's largely out of AEG's control. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a matter of the NFL and negotiations between those two parties. Um, it, again, it was reported today in the paper that the NFL continues to look at the Chavez Ravine site. So, um, at the at the end of the day, the NFL is going to need to make the decision about where they want to be in the Los Angeles area. 
so again, this is in no way suggesting we move on, yeah. but we do need to be prepared to have an alternative should uh, the NFL decide it doesn't want to come Absolutely. down to the convention center. I want to thank Tom Bonds. You taught me more about NFL and how many teams and throwing a football than anybody else I know. And I have now done my homework on it, and, and, and frankly, thank you, Tom, for your leadership on it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. Mr. LeBond. Well, uh, thank you very much for that nice compliment, Bill. It, uh, but I'll tell you. 34 it's, it's, teams, Tom. You, I, no, it's 32 right now. Oh. But you want <laughs> two more. And I, and, and, but it is up to the National Football League to decide. It, just recently in making calls to people that I know in the league, you know, they say it's all up to somebody. Why there is not an owner in, of the 32 in some city who says, I want to go to Los Angeles is beyond me. I do strongly believe, and I have great... Uh, Faith in Ed Roski is a great uh, person who's done tremendous things in this region. Uh, but I think industry is a little too far west. That's why I was so excited when uh, Farmers Fields came about. And Farmers, which is, I think, celebrating their 85th anniversary of dedicated service, came up with this creative way with AEG to try to field, put a field in there. But it is very tight. It's almost like putting a field right in here. It's very tight. And then I hear that the Los Angeles Dodgers property, which is still has a variety of owners may be interested. Whatever it is, there's been generations of Angelinos who've not had the opportunity to have this sport in their lives. Uh, but do we go on? Yes, we do. But it would be nice if there was an opportunity. But it's up to the 32 owners to say what they want to do. And I would uh, gladly say that if they did expand and with mathematics and with a regular buy in their season, you know what a buy is, Bill? Depends. What oh, you come mean. on now, Bill. Tommy, no, all right. let me throw the in football at you. No, no, no. In football, you have a bye game, which means you don't play. And they just established that a couple of years ago, so you get longer weeks. Uh, and not every team is playing all the time. Yeah. So there could be a way that they could do that. Tom, you don't want to take a team away from another No, team. I don't want to take, especially San Diego. San Diego is a great city, and the Chargers have great heritage there. And I think that would be stealing. Even though they originally came from Los Angeles, I think it would be stealing. But there may be some other cities that, whatever it happens. You tell that to a sports guy. Uh, the under, the, uh, we also got to understand, too, the Los Angeles Rams, which were here yeah. uh, in the Coliseum, were bought by uh, Robert Ursay uh, for Carol Rosenblum, and they switched it. And that's how Carol Rosenblum got here. Wow. Uh, and then the Rams eventually moved to Anaheim, and then eventually moved to St. Louis, and there's different ownership all the way around. Al Davis, who was a tremendous inspiration to some, but seen differently by others, but was a tremendous football man, uh, brought the Raiders down here, our only national uh, ch title championship that we had in the 84 uh, season plus. And what was great about that is that, you know, nine of the players were LA, LA high school graduates from Locke and, uh, and from Marshall and Hamilton. Marshall had Mike Haynes, who was a tremendous Hall of Famer. I could go on and on. But our point is this. I think our most important thing to look at the distinguished guests that are here is what we do with the convention center. Right it's key, it's key, it's key. Uh, I was at the convention center recently, Phil, uh, when they had a small business seminar and people were happy and involved. Uh, we had the travel show with the Los Angeles Times, uh, happy and involved. I do know that uh, it's amazing what AEG does across the street when they have a, on St. Patrick's Day, they had two basketball games. And, a, uh, and multiple other activities going on in what LA Live has done. That has been a plus plus to everything that is there. I just think we've got to focus right now on business-wise convention center and what we do and hope that the National Football League and any one of the 32 owners in, that say they want to come to Los Angeles, the, the welcome mat is out there at, at that location, but at the same time, they may go uh, to Dodger Stadium just because there's land up there but I also know this, that we want the Olympics in 19, uh, in, I see I'm in the last century, in 2024, we want the Olympics. And then the, uh, the Olympic Committee is not going to allow split uh, housing. So who knows if Dodger Stadium became housing? That's a concept. Who knows what happens with the Union Pacific and the big yard, which is a piggyback yard off of Mission Road, which is a large parcel that we have to look at. Our planning department should look at that, what we do long range, how that all transform. But it has been frustrating because we've been wanting to go to the dance, so to speak, uh, but yet there's no dance. And, uh, and I see our great people from our hotels and uh, the business community and the Los Angeles Inc., which is no longer the Los Angeles Tourist Board. Do you know they changed their name, Bill? No, where did they change it to? 
uh, Los Angeles Tourist Board. You know why they changed it? No. People would call LA Inc. about tattoos. They thought it was a tattoo place. They did. It's true. Anyway, enough, Jan. I took too much time, but I haven't seen you smile in weeks. I love Jan. Give Jan Poon a hand right now. All right, Jan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, back to uh, back to uh, reality there. Okay, thank you. Um, convention, sports, and leisure uh, can provide a, a needs assessment for us on the convention center. Um, Mr. Miller, can you uh, talk to tell us about CSL and what they provide? Um, Certainly. How they do that? <clears throat> they were our consultant um, on, on this as well, and so what we've now asked them to do, uh, they were evaluating how the, the proposed farmer's field transaction, the convention center, would work together, and they gave design input and, and did an independent assessment of the numbers. So now what we're going to ask them to do, they work, they work all over the country, um, both sports-related and also convention-related, and we've asked them to take a look across the country at other convention centers and what amenities um, attract people, what helps the, the visitor experience, and let us know what our convention center, the, the kinds of amenities that would help it be competitive, separate and apart from the issue of the NFL. Okay, two other quick questions. Um, I know we discussed uh, the formation of a technical advisory panel and that the Urban Land Institute would uh, provide support in, in forming that panel and that we would have, a, I guess, a charrette, if you will, uh, to begin a more public analysis of what our options are. Um, how much time does the CLA and the CAO need to uh, be able to report on various funding mechanisms so that that would coincide with our doing this more public uh, meeting um, at the convention center with ULI support? Um, in terms of the funding mechanisms, we've already uh, directed the consultants we've been working with work uh, with uh, Peralta Garcia and uh, others who provided us guidance on the uh, plan for the convention center to look at what other jurisdictions have done. Uh, San Diego is currently in the process of looking at an, an assessment uh, on their hotels to expand their convention center space. Uh, San, uh, Chicago has a unique model using the authority. Uh, there are others we're looking at, so we're hoping to have something completed, at least as a framework of what those various options are based on what other jurisdictions have, have, have done over the next 30 to 60 days. Um, again, as Jerry indicated, that we're not going to be in a position to recommend any particular one, but mm -hmm. I think it's important that you the, and uh, that this committee, the council, and the public understand what the realm of opportunity is. Okay. Okay. And I've, I've had preliminary discussions with the ULI. Um, actually, Gail Goldberg is now the executive director of the ULI here in Los Angeles. Tell everybody what ULI is. Uh, Urban Land Institute. And, and it, it, this is common for them to put together these technical advisory panels. They, br they bring um, land use planning, finance expertise. Um, it's really a broad spectrum of of expertise that they have on these panels that will look at what the city is looking for and then come back with uh, uh, recommendations. Um, and uh, I, would, I would think 30 to 60 days, but um, following this committee, I wanted to have a more uh, you know, substantive discussion with them about how long that's going to take. All right. Well, let me, let, me make a, let me make a request that you go to Ms. Goldberg from the Urban Land Institute and ask her what she thinks she can get done in terms of rolling something out and, and within 30 days. I think if we drag it out for two months, then we lose whatever momentum we have here. And that doesn't have to be the last time we meet. It's just the first time we meet. Um, and obviously, I'll make myself available for comments and discussion on logistics. Um, and the purpose, again, just for the, I'll state the recommendation. Uh, we'll take a vote on that. And we put one and two together, again, to ask the CLA and the CAO to work with the Urban Land Institute to form a technical advisory panel for the purposes of evaluating the various options the city may have for reuse of the Los Angeles Convention Center West Hall site in connection with the improvement and expansion of the Los Angeles Convention Center. And then, two, to instruct the city administrative officer and the chief legislative analyst to report on any uh, various potential funding mechanisms to include, include those discussed above and any others as appropriate. And as Mr. Santana has indicated, they've already done the first, first cut on what potential, and I stress potential, funding mechanisms may be available. And so I, I think we're 
on the road to commencing that, so there's no reason to drag this out for 60 days. Uh, certainly second that. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, again, those are the recommendations, and I guess let, let me make a motion so we formalize this, to adopt uh, the recommendations one and two in the report of the Chief Legislative Analyst dated March 26, 2013, and uh, to move forward. And then um, if we try to do this in 30 days, I don't think it's going to be necessary to have another committee meeting before we do the event, because the event itself will be a public meeting. So why don't we uh, go for that or make that our target? Okay. Okay? Sure. All right, Just so... For the record, as making the target, I'm going to be back east uh, for Jackie Guthrie's funeral, Arlo's wife, and I'm leaving on the 23rd, and, and I'm coming back on the 30th, so uh, I will be back east. Uh, is that of, of uh, April? Uh, that's a, that, that is of, of, of May. Of May. Okay. Yeah. I just ask a question, and you all, uh, I, uh, would it have any value if they take just a look at uh, the piggy backyard, or just a look, just because it's open land in the sense that all you're taking out is rail, or to look at Dodger Stadium, just to look at these sites? Well, uh, again, my the point of this is not to look at a site that works for the NFL. The, the, the charge here would be to, to tell us, if the NFL doesn't happen, what works on the West Hall site that would benefit the convention center. Got it. Oh, 100%. That, that's okay. our focus. Our focus I got it. I just wanted center. to hear that. I mean, if it, you, the NFL's obligation to go look at a whatever, you know, whatever. Right, but I think there would be some impact in other areas. Yeah. And also, uh, have we ever taken a position to support University of Southern California for the Coliseum? In terms of temporary uh, play? Or, uh, uh, no, for their uh, the transformation of the Coliseum from control of the county's uh, states and cities commission to USC. Do we know if you've taken a position on that at all? It, was never, it wasn't brought to your council for it. Right. It wasn't necessary. I, I believe they, the authority made a decision, and it doesn't get brought back to the council for final. Right, right. which I support because it's important for USC, which I think is key to all things downtown, in a way, so. Mm -hmm. yes. I just want to ask a question. Um, uh, why did Ann Schultz get rid of Tom Lewicki when he's the treasurer? It's Tim Lewicki, and you got to call him, you call, you call, call him Mr. Ann Schultz. Okay. You get a penalty Lewicki for him. He's an incredibly good guy. We all have liked him and have worked with Tim. Do we have any understanding of why Ann Schultz did what he did? I don't think anybody here, there are city employees. Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm just asking if you heard anything or you heard anything. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I'm, I don't need to get into that. Okay. I don't feel any right. obligation uh, to discuss that. By it. Three right. weeks in a row he parked on the line, over the line in the parking space you. in his place, <laughs> yeah. and he got a penalty for that. No, I don't right. know that. You call him up and ask him. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I will say this. Can I just say this? Tim Lewicki was Mulholland-like as a pusher for all things good in Los Angeles. Mulholland, the great engineer, brought us water, fed the Pueblo, built the city. Uh, I could think of uh, Governor Romer, who was the LA Unified, built all these schools. There's, uh, Tom Bradley was Mulholland-like in what he did in transforming the city. So there's very few people who walk along in our city, so it's unfortunate, but we wish Mr. Lewicki well. Thank you. Uh, but we'll find another way, an option. If we're going to get football, we're going to have a convention center. Uh, expand it. We got great people here. Uh, we got opportunity. So, on item number one, uh, the motion with the recommendations one and two in the CLA report has been made, and I assume Mr. Second, second yes. by Mr. Rosendahl. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be the recommendation on item one, and then on uh, item two, which was merely a report. There's no action to be taken on that, correct? Okay, great. Uh, are then there's no speaker cards. Uh, this is, uh, marks the end of our agenda. If there is anyone here who wishes to comment on items that are not on the agenda, this is the time to come forward as this would be the public comment period. Seeing that no one is coming forward, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.